right, so now it says we're live. Good. Give people a few seconds to show up. If all's good, this is just a regular stream. Hopefully it works a lot better than the 361. If you want to see the 360 camera, I can uh, take it out. Yeah, I was doing some 360 live streaming, not working the best. Not an optimal experience, I would say. Now, before we leave here, we have to get one of those hats. Everyone has these really cool hats. Some hats. I need one. Um, can you check and see if it's actually working? Because I don't think it's working. Oh. There it looks like it's working. Just checking to make sure the stream's up and running. Working? Cool. Okay. So, now we've got to figure out where to go next. We didn't even get to do the full tour in 360 just because it was so terrible. Uh, not any fault of the 360 camera itself, just an issue with network speeds. You know, trying to stream 360 video over uh, 4G just does not work. So here's that Insta360 camera. I've got an adapter because I've got an uh, iPhone 5S. It works a lot better with a 6S and a 7, probably. But 5S, you got to use the adapter. It works well for photos and for video, but just not necessarily live video. But again, I think that's more the fault of Verizon than with the camera itself. So let me flip this camera around. You can start seeing what I'm seeing, and uh, it can go anywhere. And now I can actually see the comments too. So live chat is up and running. Everything's good. I'm gonna do a quick wipe of the lens one second just to make sure that there's no uh, smudges interfering with the picture quality. One second. That might be a little clearer. Yeah, so I'm using the Zoom, 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 Smooth Q. And uh, I think that'll be, be a little bit easier for me on my arm compared to NAB, which is doing it all handheld, trying to keep it as steady as possible. Gimbal, I think, will be a little bit better. Hopefully it's a more pleasant experience. This is Cinegear, way different than NAB in terms of the feel, look. Obviously, a lot of the companies that are here are similar to the ones that we were looking at at NAB. But it's on the, we're at Paramount Studios right now. So there's a lot to see and do. Do you have any preference of where you want to go, David? Everyone was mentioning the Panasonic booth. Panasonic booth? I have no idea where they are. Well, they're supposed to be revealing that new camera today, right? The uh, kind of little upgrade from... Broken up. Let's see what kind of raffles they have going on. Yeah. Yeah, you can't pan around. No 360 anymore. Rich, do you remember us? I try not to, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm old. I don't even remember my kids. No worries, no worries, no worries. We were at NAB. We stopped by the Zine booth quite a, quite a few times. He was the guy that yelled out, he loves Zine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yelled it out here, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no benefit. Did you get anything at there? No. No? Didn't win a single thing. Ooh. You gotta yell out, I love Zine. I love Zine! All right, you gotta yell out. Like David's a sellout. Look at this sellout. I like hats. What, we, Hold on, I'll, I'll flip the yeah. camera around. Everyone can see. I love Zine! Yeah. I'm, I'm Were you there when the girl won two? Yes. Yeah. Like her, and then her when the other one. I've got a big hat, so hats don't usually fit me. <laughs> yes. But he, he looks good on David, though. He called me up and I gave him something the next week. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Look forward to getting a fit pretty soon. Hopefully, become an ambassador. It's supposed to be only 70 degrees, 70 something degrees. That's they what they it. said. Not there, I, what they I know. I don't it's a beautiful day. In New York, you know, they have, they have valley, they have desert, they have, so they have Los Angeles. It was supposed to be like 76 degrees. This is not 70 90 degrees. style. Yeah, we flew last night. It was, it was crazy. So I was kind of hoping it'd be the same kind of deal, but. 
little bit warmer. Well, you have to look good as that. Yeah. How do I look? Yeah, you look yeah. excellent. Look great. I'm excellent. <laughs> Looking good. What's going on here? Just so people can uh, play around with the lenses if they want with the Ursa. Yeah, they play. You can play. I can't. I can't even see that screen with my sunglasses. Such a big, big display on the Ursa. It's fun though. Fun stuff. Look back like Ocky. You didn't bring me back in. on your social media. Look back on social media. I'll have to check on social media. <laughs> we, we came out with a 16 millimeter full frame for in Broken on Cine. Broken on Cine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I didn't know we just continued that. That's what I was saying. But, uh, yeah. When was this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was on our, our web, on our, our, our uh, Instagram. Uh, but it was a, uh, yeah, like a sponsored ad. Maybe a promotion. I don't know what you're it might be. I don't know. Okay. We're gonna go take a walk. So, which stand are you on? That was the Roken on Zine booth. We just stopped by because we were pestering that guy a bunch at NAB. Thought we'd go bother him a little bit more. So, not the hat I was interested in getting, but I like it nonetheless. I mean, we just had to sell our souls to get it. Worth it. Live on YouTube for the world to see. I don't know, chat, you guys tell me, do you like seeing this stuff, like the high-end cinema gear? I love to look at it, but so much of it is uh, so far out of reach, I think, for most of us. What do I think of their lenses? Rokinon lenses? I, I really like the Rokinon lenses. I haven't actually shot with the Zine ones myself, but... Uh, So I can't speak to the quality of the Zine ones, but I imagine that they're good. I know there's a few people, I think Tom Antos has done some reviews of the Zine lenses. You can check those out. Um, I like the price point. From what I've seen, they're pretty comparable. Like the CP2s, as far as image. Yeah, quality. CP2s, but uh, same price point too, right? Yeah, there's, no, I mean, CP2s are a lot more expensive. Than, yeah. the, than the Zines? I thought they're both around 3,000. 3000 seems to be kind of like the entry level to cinema glass. $3,000 a lens. Oh, well. Nah, no, it's even a little bit cheaper than that. Is it? Mm -hmm. Like 1500 Yeah. Or if, like if you get it in like a pack with a bunch yeah, of them? Yeah, if you get a whole pack, I think the starter pack for Zine is around 10 grand. So. And then you get like your 24, I think it was a 35, 50, 85. People like seeing the high end stuff. Cinegear has the high-end stuff. What are you looking at here? This is... Wearing a hat is a little bit more difficult to take photos. Oh, the hat interferes? Yeah. I kind of like it. It keeps my uh, eyes nice and shaded without having the sunglasses interfering with me being able to see the screen on the stream. How big is your lens? Not big enough. So David's snapping a bunch of photos. I would love to have a third hand for filming, you know, footage with the GH4 to make a vlog or something. But holding the gimbal with one hand, I only have one hand free. And that's helpful when I need to adjust my hat or pick up my sunglasses or take out my wallet. I was debating on whether I wanted both hands full for the entire day and I was like, you know what? It's not worth it. David can just snap some photos and he'll post them over on Instagram. You can follow him over there. He's always trying to get me to shill for his uh, Instagram account. That's because most of the photos that you post are my photos. I take really cool behind the scenes photos of Strong. No, you don't. You take behind the scenes photos of not me, and then I take behind the scenes photos of you. It's not true. Your, your highest like photos are photos that I've taken. That's true, that's true. The ones where I'm like, hey David, get a photo of this. That's not true. <laughs> In and out, 
like that adorable photo you have that you posted oh, with yeah, the yeah, little girl. Yeah, yeah. That's actually a photo shot. It is, yeah. Photo credit, David Flores. Photo credit, but also photo shot. Does it? I know everyone wants to see In and Out. So. The girl was actually crying in the yeah. photo. Yeah. <laughs> but I painted her back in. Is there anything like that we want to see? Before we listen to what YouTube wants us to see, is there anything we want to see? Ultralight control systems. Manufactures the ultimate articulating arm system for rigging lights, cameras, monitors, and sound equipment. All right. Oh, these are kind of neat. It's made out of aluminum. 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 61 aircraft grade aluminum. Gotcha. Okay. Hard anodized, dyed, so. There's no metal to metal contact. The uh, balls have uh, O-rings on them. Oh, okay. So um, that's with grips, so you don't have to crank real hard. Just enough. That's cool. Yeah. It's designed for a saltwater environment, so it really holds up. Most people tell us that yeah. they have this stuff for years. Ultralight control systems. That's cool. I kind of like the uh, mix and match build it yourself, right? That's it. You, you only kinda... have to get what you need. Huh, I like that. Buy some kit when there's parts you don't want. Very cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy. Uh, famous YouTubers. I have no idea. I don't even know who's going to be here. We the first one we met up with uh, famous is Le Levi from Uphill Cinema. Is he famous? I guess it depends on uh, your standard for entry level YouTube fame. But yeah, we ran into Levi before we were in stre streaming. We walked in the gate and he came up, snuck up right behind us. What are we looking at? An actual film camera. Ooh. It's very rare nowadays. Shoot film over here. Yeah. <laughs> Wanna see some film runs? So sure. Wanna take a photo of a relic. <laughs> oh, It'll still work just as good as it did day one, man. As long as the film's good. Check it out. No worries, man. Have fun, guys. Hope we see you around. So we credit it and everything. Modern history. Look at that. What's that stuff in there? Yeah, I don't know. It just stinks. It's flammable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, Panaflex guys. It's not a relic. <laughs> cool, thank you. Of course, guys, of course. You guys ever used the wood? You guys ever used this before? No. Well, then today is your day. You guys are tall. Who wants to try it, man? Have any yeah. wheels? No. Okay. So uh, your locks are here. Here. This is your pan. This is your help. The rest is just for you. What's the uh, what's the trigger for? The what? What's the, you know? Oh, this is the zoom gun. Ah. It's not very, this thing is a little janky. This is part of the antiquation. Yeah, yeah. The, the bracket. But uh, yeah, so look at it. Go in. And it's funny because it is so antiquated that uh, literally it's in and out. So we'll zoom in. <laughs> zoom out. This is great. Yeah, Claire, actually look in there real quick. Put your eye in there. You can operate too. But, uh, Look at that. That's what it looks like when you're really good, right? Oh, shit, I rolled out. I knew it was going to happen. God damn it. Thank you. I redid it the other way earlier today. I'm like, oh, boo. No more film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I saw three flags, actually. 
because that kind of is, but... Yeah, no, this is the best, though. I love it. Look, Hannah Head is one of my favorite. It's a classic, and it's, I mean, God, I think they built it in the 70s. Yeah, exactly. um, And it's still as good. I mean, I've used it, you know, just as this is last year, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but since we stopped using Panama and we over to Auto Nemons, you ended up with Airy Head. So, the Airy Head 2 is really nice because this section will actually fold out. Right. So, for a fat belly operator, <laughs> get it out of the way. But, uh, no, it's a, it's a beautiful system, and this is something that I think is getting lost, is like the art of operating and just like wheels and things like that. But I'm happy that some of the gimbal stuff is bringing it back a little bit, you know? Yeah. No, I have, I, can I get my hands on that? Yeah, dude, yeah. I've always wanted to have a feel, a feel for the wheels. I've never once done it, and it yeah, so feels great. Box, so always just take it when you get on it. Boom, that's your first thing. Okay. The pan and the okay. pan and salt. And you'll forget it, don't worry. So you gotta look through here, man. You gotta make it happen. Uh, All right, I see, I see. Oh, it's so smooth. It feels so good, right? Oh, yeah. That's how it should feel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, now try to follow somebody. Okay. Follow me. Over here. I love, I love the, uh... Where's it? Locked is right here? Oh, uh, yeah. Just give him a little tip. No, you don't have to press that. That's okay. cool. Yeah. cool. I love the, uh... The mental gymnastics you're trying to go through to, to get a feel for it. Because oh, I've never done that before. Yeah. It's so cool. It's a trip, but it's like... It, yeah, it took me a while, too. Like, but the best way to learn it is you take it on a set, and you don't have to do it. Only have this. Yeah. Then you have nothing to pull back, and you need to lose the job, and you make it in. And it's just so smooth. Like, that's what you want. I, I, I think it's kind of... Oh, please, no, that's what it's here for, man. Yeah, I'll get out of your way. All about it. There you go. Awesome. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. For sure, guys. Yeah, it, 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 it's like drawing with an etch sketch That was way more smooth than I thought it was. No, but I mean, if, I'm sure everyone follows probably Freefly as well, but they're actually designing the... Wireless ones? The wireless ones for yeah. their gimbals. I'm gonna get out of the way so I can so like I can see through it. It feels really good though, just how, how smooth those wheels are. Getting that precise movement that you want for like a big heavy camera rather than fighting with a fluid head. Alright. So, like I said, feeling here, way different than NAB, obviously outside, uh, beautiful weather, at Paramount Studios. Very, very cool venue for something like this. But definitely harder to know where to go or what to do, because, uh, do we even get a map coming in? No, we didn't. Yeah, there's like no, there's, it's just kind of like walk around and... There's, uh... There was a huge board of like all the vendors that were going to be here, but there wasn't exactly like a I'm sure there is. If someone wants to go online and tell us where to go. Yeah. Uh, the NAB experience, once again, control your own voyage. It's interesting. There's a ton of people here, but I don't see a lot of people online talking about Cinegear as much as NAB. I don't know why that is. I think this is cooler. If you were going to go to one... Oh, this is way cooler. I mean, you're on the Paramount, Paramount backlot. They were saying before it was on Universal's backlot, which is also a cool backlot. Do you want to tuck in here into uh, one of these stages? Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's way more high-end, but even like NAB has a bunch of high-end stuff, and there's still lower-end stuff here, too. Definitely, this is definitely more of like a Hollywood filmmaking type expo. I insulted that whole guy's reason for living when we first walked up. Which guy? The film guy saying it's a, a dinosaur or a fossil, whatever you said? <laughs> Look at this relic. 
Yeah, I mean, this is... But when you walk around, how many film cameras have you seen? That's the one film camera. Yep. So Sony's got a booth here. Looks, uh... Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the Senegare Expo 2017. Looks very similar to the one at NAB. Maybe just a stripped-down version, more focused on just cinema. we got to find Panasonic, though. That's what we need to find. We got, we got Mo Richardson here, Westcott. So yeah, it's a lot of the, the same familiar faces. I've got to. You know what i got to do. i got to make sure I'm... Plugged in here. I don't want to lose power. Can you uh, hold this for a second? Just gotta get my battery pack out. Also, <laughs> 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 So out right there. <laughs> he loves the zine. Hey, I love affordable quality. To be fair, I said it too. You said it first. I was, I was, I I was following you. You know how hot it is outside? I was like, absolutely, for a hat, I'll say anything. Mr. Zine himself. Let's see. All right. NABs for the pros and broadcasting. Let's see. Where's the plug on here? Not an incorrect statement. There we go. Just getting power plugged in. So uh, phone keeps power. Gimbal keeps power all day long. Uh oh. Uh, let's see. How do I tell if it's charging? It's, uh, uh, oh, there, there, uh, there we go. That looks like it's charging. And now we'll just do uh, a little bongo tie here to wrap up these cables. Catch the crane. Yes, those ten are the yeah. These are really cool. We check those out at NAB. Ten thousand watt equivalent LED. So it's not ten thousand watts of LED power. I believe it's fifteen hundred watts of LED power. Is this a selfie stick? It is a, it's the shortest it's a gimbal, piece. yeah, yeah. So just to stabilize the phone here while I'm doing this live stream. Yeah. It's for more like the social media thing. Yeah, I'm streaming to YouTube right now if you want to say hi. Look, look, look. There you go. Yeah, so it just keeps it nice and smooth so it's not all shaky handy cam. Who's, uh, who's, oh, how did you do that? Oh, this is on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I'm streaming right there. So yeah, we're just walking around the show, Sweet. checking stuff out. Why are you here? What's your name? I'm Ruben. Ruben? Oh. Yeah. I insure everything. Oh, right on. <laughs> <laughs> I insure it with you. Strong. Strong. Yeah. It says it three, three, three times. I like it. In case you vendor or plug. Plug. Yeah. Plug. <laughs> How was that? Huh? Yeah, almost. Oh, close, yeah. What are, you, what, are you, what are you doing now? Oh, I'm gonna, oh, I'm I'm gonna just type these cables. Yeah. yeah, so I might have yeah. David. Help me out here for, Go for it. Did you invent this thing? That, no, no, no. I just bought it. You bought it? Yeah, it's a... Where did you buy it? Is it over here in this? Uh, Amazon. Amazon. That's why I bought it. Grab my team over here. Okay. These, these rascals. Which ones? Uh, no, these guys right there. Uh -huh. This group here? Yeah. <laughs> you guys are live on YouTube. Are we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Say hi, insurance geeks. Hi, insurance geeks. So you insure everything here? Yeah. Majority of it. Just because like everything's so high end, so expensive. And, right. Yeah. So if like someone steals something, so that's like, on you to fix. These guys here, they, they probably rent. No, don't, 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 don't interview me. Like, yeah, yeah. Majority of these guys they rent stuff out. Okay. That's that's what we step in and if like a renter or a brakes here or something. So if I go up to one of the booths and I like 
break that light. You cover that? Well, so I don't cover anything here per se. I'm just uh, saying I don't think I'm coming. I see. Oh, this I see. particular I see. show, I mean, they could break whatever the hell they want. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, thank you, Ruben. You got it. Appreciate it. Uh, nice talking to you. Nice, uh, nice meeting you guys. All right, where do you want to go? Now that I've got this Frankenstein cable contraption going on. It sounded very mobbish. Sure, anything. You know, you would not you would want anything bad to happen. Yeah. What are you doing here? Uh, excuse me. That'd be, that'd be cool if I like invented this gimbal thing, but no. I think you should just start saying you did. I did. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah. The uh, the gimbal iPhone live stream yeah. it's patented. Really a nice. Uh, yeah. Pro proprietary uh, proprietary technology from Strons van der Plug. What else we got? Oh, Atomos. I don't know what I don't know what Ver is. Do you know what Ver is? Murder. Very bad connection. Uh oh, we might have to get outside. Let's see. Animos. All right, so it's this very bad connection. Uh, everyone in the chat, let me know. What does that mean for you guys? Is that like. It's interesting that the Atomos booth is a fraction of the. Yeah, Atomos is a tiny by in NAB comparison. Uh, yeah, is this uh, connection too bad? Do I need to go outside to get my signal back? Or is it uh, maintaining? <laughs> oh, we saw these guys at NAB. Awesome. Aaron. Quasar Science. We've got some cool LED tubes. We got some that are bicolor. Oh, those are nice. A little flat, flat panel, just soft lights right there. They look pretty terrible on the iPhone, but in real life they look nice. I think we. Uh... Can you tell me if I'm still streaming or not? Because I don't see... You're still live. I don't see comment. But we're out. Uh, yep, still streaming. Interesting. Very bad connection. You're still... All right. Well, you're also next to the door. <laughs> yeah. All right, still streaming. That's good. Yeah, just uh, chat. Keep it keep it alive so I know you're, know you're there. Uh, I get alerts from my phone, you know, bad connection, whatever, because we're inside right now. So if it becomes a problem, I might have to pop back outside. <laughs> so this says this is very camera prep. Interesting. Yeah, this isn't gonna work if uh, everyone starts trying to live stream from their phone. Thankfully, don't think anyone else is doing that. <laughs> They're just texting or checking email or playing Angry Birds or something. Kind of get out of here. It's kind of cramped. Velvet. Grab cannon and run. Yeah, that's C200. That's a nice, nice looking camera from Canon, finally. I appreciate the effort. I don't know that it's something that would actually make a, make a dent in my perception of them. I think they've been charging far too much for their features, Canon that is, for, for quite a while. And uh, C200 seems like they're trying to like take a slight little turn to, to maybe be more affordable and competitive. They've been really... Yeah, maybe you could, a nice way to put it would be coasting, 
been coasting on their brand name for quite a while, and I don't know if Panasonic and Blackmagic and Sony are really making a dent at all in, in their in Canon sales, but C200 seems like they're maybe at least a little worried. I totally lost David. I don't know where he ended up at, but yeah. I'd love to get my hands on the C200. It just seems that the uh, feature-wise, they're stated. Features-wise, the C200 just uh, is kind of more of the same in terms of what else is already on the market, and the codex, I'm a little, a little strange. Granted, there's a raw light, so it's a little bit better. I would say better than like you know just a pure raw, just because you know I think. If you're working on a Hollywood film, sure, you want the highest data rate, but I think a lot of us are conscious about the amount of data we're putting through our workflow. Having raw, compressed raw of some kind, or light raw, is really nice. But then the only other option is the MP4, like, you know, I think it's 100 megabit or 150 megabit, 4K60, MP4, 8-bit, 420. Good drone. What drone? Oh, that drone. It just seems like there's nothing in the middle for the C200. There's either just the low-end MP4 or the like slightly higher-end RAW, and I really like the Ursa Mini because it has ProRes and all the flavors of it and RAW. So you can shoot ProRes Proxy if you want something lightweight, or you can shoot ProRes LT, you can shoot ProRes uh, HQ, any flavor of ProRes that you want, you've got, and you've got RAW and compressed RAW. So you have so many codec options with the Ursa Mini that it really, like, you can make it a high-end camera or you can make it a more budget-conscious, kind of lower-end camera, but still have the benefits of the extra dynamic range, the Super 35 sensor, uh, the shooting 4K60. There's there's so much to love about the Ursa Mini. And now that they have the Ursa Mini Pro with all the, like, the built-in NDs and more controls, which fix a lot of problems in the original Ursa Mini, it's, uh, from my perspective, a, a, a more attractive offering than maybe the C200. Or there's always, you know, like the GH5, if you're looking for something low-end that's really affordable but gives you some of those higher-end features. So, C200 is a nice, nice effort, but that might be a little bit, a little too late. I want to go see. Film tools. Thought I recognized somebody, but I didn't. Uh, you want to keep walking further, maybe, into the uh, back lot area. Have we kind of touched most of it, or is there still a lot more further that way? Yeah. That's a mistake we made at NAB. The small booths are the interesting small ones. Booths are the ones that have the I like that uh, that the, the riggable stuff. I forget the name of it already. The, it was like the aluminum pipe. What, are you looking at batteries? Companies like this, they have this kind of batteries. Oh, blue shape, energy inside. Oh, so you can, it's a battery that you can pair with your smartphone? Water resistant, splash series, waterproof, long life models. True lens services, lens servicing, engineering, and map boxes. Sully says blue shape is cool but expensive. No, this is an iPhone 5S. I rock it old school. I, mean, I do. It's time for an upgrade at some point, but for the time being, the 5S works just fine. You talking about 720S or 1080S? <laughs> From the 360 stuff? Yeah, if anyone's just tuning in the live stream right now, you can uh, hopefully go see the, the first couple live streams we did this morning. Uh, we did them in 360, so you can kind of get a sense of the uh, perspective and scale 
they didn't work uh, too great. Uh, you know, resolution is terrible, bit rate's terrible, frame rate's terrible. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 300. 300 right there. I don't know. But yeah, go check out the 360 live stream uh, at some point too. Granted, it's not live anymore, but. Ah, Canon. This is the Zoom Smooth Q. Oh, I can adjust the little pitch there. That's nice. Yeah, this is a Canon booth. Uh, do they have the C200 here? I mean, it was just an... Yeah, this, this uh, Zoom Smooth Q works works really well, really well. Show something cool stuff. What's cool stuff? It's all cool stuff. It's all super expensive stuff. So I got a kick out of the guy who's talking about insurance. <laughs> Oh, he insures everything here. Cause like, look at this. Okay, hold on. I'll, I'll check back in the camera to see if the uh, C two hundred's over there. Look at this. Just insane. This is Cinestyle Multicam Rentals and Workflow Solutions. Oh, you guys, you guys got to see this. So this is where the uh, 360 stream we cut off earlier when we were over in this area. You want some high speed camera moves for slow motion? Goodness gracious. I've always heard it as Leonard Chapman, but he's Chapman Leonard over here. He like dollies and cranes and all sorts of fun stuff. Chapman Leonard, Leonard Chapman, what do I, maybe it is, maybe I always have heard it as Chapman Leonard, I don't know. But yeah, if you're looking to rent high-end stuff. Sorry for the quick pans. It's kind of tight quarters in this little corridor here. Doing some 360 stuff here. Oh, hey! What? Oh, ye! Right on! Yee, absolutely! Yee, right on! We're absolutely yee. I'm streaming to YouTube right now. Is that cool? Absolutely. Excellent, excellent. What's Hello, going on YouTube. here? Is this 360 camera right here? This is 360 camera right here. Oh, right on. So this, this bad boy can actually, uh, what's it, I guess, live stream to YouTube and Facebook. Okay, so okay. If you want to use what you're using right now, you can definitely use this. Um, so does it uh, Wi-Fi then? Yep. Wi-Fi, okay. So no, use, like, LTE or anything like no, that? No, so you can use data. So if you're just doing through, uh, I guess, the app to the, the camera, you can do it through Wi-Fi. Oh, okay. If you have data, right, you'll do it through your phone, it'll come to here, and then you can live stream. Gotcha. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. Um, it outputs at 2.7 though for live, and then 4K with auto stitching inside the camera, and then 5.7 if you're, I guess if you're stitching yourself. So you get the higher resolution, but you don't get it done in-house. In Not in the camera, you yeah. have to do it like in a computer or something exactly, like that? Yeah. Okay. Do you have software for that, or what software do you use yeah, to so stitch it? Stitching is done in the camera, so. Okay. Oh, David's back. Did you have to? Did you tune in the live stream to find out where I was? I did exactly that. <laughs> no, I love I love the uh, the Yi products. It's cool. I didn't know you guys were having a booth here. So technically, here's a video of it. This is a video of what's happening right here. So you're gonna live stream, live stream to live stream. This is the most yeah. Let me <laughs> connect this real quick. If I can get this done for you, I can show you a quick video of it though. While yeah, of course. I'm sure you already went over the tech specs, but 
brief me. So, a 4K, right? You said 5.5K if you do it? 5.7 if you stitch it yourself. Uh, oh, cool. 4K, 30 if, uh, if you're doing it in camera. And then 2.5K for the live stream. At 30 frames a second? Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> Technically, here's a video of it that this guy was just filming in his yeah, house, right? You guys so, gonna be able to, no one's gonna be able to see this. Yeah, right. So, I wish I could show you guys. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit harder, but the no sunlight worries. is hitting us. Uh, but it works. Um, What's the price point on this? 400. 400? Okay. Yeah. This is a good price point. Um, yeah. It should be releasing by the end of June. End of June? Yeah. What's battery life on this guy? Ooh, uh, I guess based on what you film it at, um, yeah. it should be, I think, around an hour. So, yeah, I'm sure there's probably a way to put some external power to it, too. Um, again, right, it's, it's going to film probably around like maybe 30 minutes if it's filming like five. Is it internal yeah. memory or uh, no. SD card? So this is sort of the beta model, which I know this is the only thing that's going to pop out, but it's a battery, it's a removable battery. Um, okay. It has USB-C and then you can mini HDMI right there too, so. And micro SD cards? Yep, micro SD cards right here, I can just pop it out. Right. What's the name of it? E360. E360. Yeah. And then the Halo is the kind of bigger, bigger brother? Yeah, the big brain is uh, the E Halo and the E360. Cool. Look, I can see. Hold on, we gotta get some sunlight here. Is this only video or photos as well? This is uh, photos as well. Okay. And you can program all right on here too. So then, what would be the upgrades on this, the, the Halo? Um, it's 8x8 at 30. Um, 8K? So 8K by 8K? Yeah, 8K, but obviously you're gonna need a screen that can do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, or you can just go to downgrade it and go, I think it's 5.8 5 at 60 frames per second. 16. How many cameras are there? 16 cameras around, one up top. Okay. And then if you want to count one more, it's 18, but this is just the command module. So I pop it on. All and then it. what's the price on this? If that's 400 over there, this is what? 17,000. 17,000? 17,000. All right. Yeah, um, it, it comes with a lot. Yeah. Okay. So you see the 17 cameras on here, and then we, we buy two extra ones too. So we provide two extra cameras, cords. The battery technically goes right here. We've got a, a Bluetooth remote, screws. You know, we try to provide everything as much as we can. Again, it's a portable battery right here, so you either you can plug it in if you want, or you just buy a couple extras and film on site. Oh, okay. No worries about that. And now this is, it's not stereoscopic, right? Yes. Oh, it is. It's stereoscopic, 360, 8K, for seventeen thousand, and then like, what do you like to like rent it? What do you think people rent it for? Ooh, so we haven't, I haven't talked about rent, so it's hard for me to quote it live. I don't want to be <laughs> put on the spot for that, but I. That's okay. Yeah, but um, I know Google is uh, doing sort of a, a sign up thing right now. Okay. And they'll rent it out to like creatives. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a creative. Exactly. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you can sign up. Um, you don't have to purchase it for seventeen thousand if you don't want to, but uh, you have options too. You definitely want to test it out, right? So even on modules, you can sort of see. Technically, it's recording it, right now. Is it a touch screen here? Um, no. No. Just hit it and it starts recording. This this is touch screen itself though, so you can sort of just mess with the settings, Wi-Fi oh, okay. on. It works. Oh yeah, yeah. Modes. I don't think anyone can see that on the live stream, but yeah, it's a little touch screen. <laughs> um, yeah, we have all of that, so it's yeah, it's really nice. And then does this this pair with a phone as well, so you can kind of view it or yeah, like so you. Know, I, it doesn't work right now on this one. I haven't paired it to this yet. But we do have an app for it. New Halo. Yeah. So you can sort of preview it while you're filming, right? You don't want any sort of like blind spots or bad areas you're looking at. Sure. Uh, as a producer or a director. So. YouTube wants to know when there's going to be a Yi drone. A Yi drone. So the Yi drone is right back there. Okay. <laughs> it already exists. So here's the Yi drone. Um, I guess you want to guess how fast. Uh, is this like it's gonna be impressive? Let's say 50 miles an hour. Higher? 70. 75 miles an hour? Yeah, so it's, it's pretty quick, right? Um, I actually didn't bring the battery because I had to put this in my luggage. Okay. You can't bring a big battery, but this should be the battery. This is the bulk of the weight. You can feel it right now. It's, it's light as hell. Yeah. That's so light. And so we do have gimbal systems too, so we're connected here. And we're gonna attach this right here. That, or even our 360, based on what you want to do. And this is the Micro Four Thirds one, right? Yeah, so it's on the uh, right here. Okay. So you can put this on a gimbal, 
underneath, is it the Arita? Yeah, Arita. Yep, so Arita? Uh, it's, a, it's a team out of uh, Latvia, and they're designing it right now. And so they have mounted this, and I've seen a video of it. We don't have it right now, but they were testing it out. Yeah, again, right, um, it all folds in. What's all this footage we're looking at here? This is the 4K Plus. The 4K Plus, the action camera? Yeah, so it's that right here. This, this, it looks really freaking good on that screen. Yes, it's a 4K screen, right? Um, 4K is becoming more available for everybody. Like, I, I bought one from Black Friday, right? <laughs> uh, but, you know, you can start looking at it too, right? 60 frames per second, it gives you better quality. There has been touch ups on it, right? Yeah. Now he got it. He got it fixed. Uh, oh, the 4K Plus. Yeah, it's a 4K Plus. I could just put it in my pocket right now. But I <laughs> We always think something goes missing. We're like, oh shoot, how are we going to check security? Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, it does raw photo in our beta right now. Voice command. Do, is there like full manual controls over this? So like, can you set the shutter speed? Can you set like, like you would on like maybe, you know, like the mirrorless camera over there? Resolution, metering, field of view, video quality, white balance, coloring, okay. shutter. Shutter. Oh, ooh, click on shutter. Hold on. Oh, you can set it. That's so awesome. All touch screen's really nice. Yeah, yeah, yes, it's off. And then obviously we got I'll go back. Based on what resolutions you want to do, right? Yeah. Um, our big thing right now would be the 4K. 60 frames per second. Yeah, I just I like that I can set the shutter speed. A lot of the action cameras yeah. you don't have control over that. Exactly. So I want that, a little motion blur, you know. I want it to look natural, not super stuttery. You guys know better than us, right? Um, everybody has their own way of doing filming, right? Yeah. So give them the option. Yeah, give it. Oh, give me auto. Yeah, in case I just want to throw an auto, but I want. To, sometimes I want control too. Yeah. So, uh, so you can live, wait, you can live, live stream from this through your phone as well? Yeah, so uh, right now uh, we're, we're going to release in our next firmware updates at the end of June. We'll okay. have that out. Our previous model does have it already. Gotcha. Yeah. So, should be too hard to implement, but you know, we're going to have live streaming if you want to film it on that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for talking to us. Yeah, of course. Appreciate it. Thank you guys have a good day. Thank you. What was your name? Dewey. Dewey? I'm Strons. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> Michael? Here, Mike. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Mike, thank you. There you go. Makes me not want to get a GoPro. The Yi the Yi drone, the Yi action camera, the mirrorless camera, the Yi 360 camera, the Yi stereoscopic 8K 360 camera. Show some best stabilizer gimbal. You're you're watching the best stabilizer gimbal right now. No, I don't. I'm shooting on the Smooth Q. Uh, it's for like an iPhone, but uh, I really like the Zune. Zune. I don't, know, I don't know how to say it. Uh, Zune uh, stabilizers. Those gimbals are really nice. But I know Came TV people are happy with the Came TV gimbals that for the most part what I hear. Matthew's equipment over here. Yeah, they said that the Yi 4K camera, not the Plus, the, the, the Plus is getting a firmware update to do the live streaming, but they said the Yi 4K, the regular one, already does the live streaming. So he said it shouldn't be that hard to implement. Cinepower International, Aiden Tech. Yeah, Zune got a firmware update. The app got a firmware update just a little bit ago, I think. they like. It looks like they're being pretty proactive with keeping things up to date and improving on uh, their products just through software. Yeah, studio air conditioning. That felt really good. This is my favorite move. Hold on. It's not. I mean, what, what's the temperature out right now? 76. It feels like 80. And that feels really good.
cool everyone down. That's awesome. Oh, Sully says the Panasonic announcement is at 4 o'clock. Block battery, Lampard. Vaxis Video Wireless System. Yo Yada, Creative Workflow Software. Index Clips, Backup Media, Catalog Projects, Search Metadata, Transcript Video, Trim Shots, Consolidate. Yo Yada. All right. <laughs> Abel Cine, all right. What do we got? Gig gloves. Onyx. Oh, some hand protection. Are we going to have to uh, reapply our sun protection here in a little bit? Probably. It's the thing, if you're going to come to Cine Gear, the majority of it is outside. So you want to get that sunblock, get that sunscreen lotion, get it on early, and make sure you reapply. I <laughs> turn around and David is like not where I expected him to be. He's checking out something over here with these uh, grip gloves. Gig gloves. The only completely black work glove designed for production pros who need to be invisible to the audience. They're the only completely black ones? I highly doubt that. <laughs> Seems like someone could easily make make that untrue. Some other company just comes in, ah, we got black ones on too. They look like they're, uh, dirt bike gloves. No, I think, I think it's... The only ones that are completely black that are designed for designed for production players. <laughs> oh, okay. They make Good black gear. gloves. But these are the ones. Oh, you can, you can pop your fingers out? Is that the deal? Yeah, those are cool. Alright, Sammy's camera's over here. Here we go. The light the light meter? Is it Sikonic? Sikonic? Ask for a cost on the, the grip gloves. Win a free pair of gig gloves at 4.30. I could probably just go, I could probably just go search them online, find them. I don't know, the price here. Gonna be there at Infocom? Yeah. You want me to buy it? You gonna be there? No, no, you don't have to. Uh, I'm gonna be yes. attending, I'm not exhibiting, but one of my Yellow, you like the blue. <laughs> yeah, you know, TMP is got a scanner. Yeah, yeah, we do. Oh, can let I me try it. Let me try it. Joe, can I just scan your bed? Is that right? Yeah. How, how much are these per pair? $39. $39. $39. I'm a drummer. That's all right. So much. Uh, try it. You might be a medium. They feel really nice. I would start. No, no, no. Our, our size is one small. What's that? What's the material? It's a, it's a woven nylon with a, a rubber exoskeleton on the back okay. and a coarse padded material on the bottom. Gotcha. It feels like it'd be really comfortable. Oh, they are, yeah. yeah. It's like flipping like that, that just means... And that. do they all have, like, the, where the, you can take yeah, your fingers out? Yeah, they all have that. And all the fingers are conductive, so you can operate a phone or tablet without having to take the fingers out. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can use your phone so even with the gloves on. It's excellent. No, no, there's a tab on 39 bucks? For a pair of gloves? That's not bad. What do you pay for, like, a regular pair of gloves? 20 bucks? Yeah, for like gloves like that. 20 bucks. 40 doesn't seem outrageous. Because, I mean, nowadays, like when going through film school, you handle the lights that you actually do need gloves. But all the lights we work with nowadays are all LED. Yeah. We could pretend that they're hot lights. I mean, it's, it's good practice to always have gloves on you or in your bag or your an AC. Well, just sometimes, sometimes, sometimes my hands get a little sweaty. It's nice to kind of have a little bit of extra grip. Yeah, if it's if it's cold weather, for sure, for sure. Uh, 
DJI Osmo. I think DJI was in one of the first. It was the very, very first one, right? Next to Red. The one that had the line to get in. Oh. Cinemoves. That's pretty sweet. Strap a uh, gimbal to a dirt bike. How's the quality holding up on the live stream? Things looking good, sounding good, staying in sync. Here, I'll do a little test. See if my sound matches with my face. I suppose I should say something, right? Thinking, I'm thinking. What could I say? We've got some. I got some bar. We got a bar over here. You want some beer? You want some? You want some alcohol? Always. I'll flip it around again. Sound is great. Let's flip the camera. There we go. We got a nice little bar. Cold beer sounds pretty good right about now. Or we can go back to the air conditioning. The tube. Stand up. This row we haven't been down here. Okay. Let's. I'm so turned around right now. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, with the live streaming with the YouTube app and the way I've got it set up, it's only 480p. So yes, it is not optimal, but hopefully it's good enough, maybe. Hopefully it's at least smooth. That was my, that was my goal. I want to make sure it was smoother than NAB and it wasn't all reliant on me and my steady hands to keep things nice and smooth. 360 rise, life without edges. Oh, so they've got little housing. Housings for 360 rigs. The E3D Pro. Hello. So these are it's like cases and housings and stuff for 360 rigs? Correct. Excellent. Correct. So we work with different camera companies. These ones are Yee cameras. I can help GoPro down there, and I cover all the series of GoPro, three, four, five. And uh, GoPro with a SyncBack device. So the SyncBack device has a, a pulse and these extended, uh, it's an extended life battery and syncing device that you put on the back of the GoPro. And through an app, you can control up to 24 cameras. So you turn them on or off, you see if they're working, you monitor their battery life. Because gotcha. once you take this and you put it out in the field, your assumption is that it's recording. Yeah. So, you know, this would be the solution to knowing. Knowing, uh, yeah. It's working, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. My pleasure. And the water housing is for the 360 are also pretty cool. I think we've hit the end here. There's a, a food. Oh, it says food court, but I'm pretty sure it's only in an outburst. Food court. There's Pink's hot dogs. That sounds pretty good, actually. Oh, let me adjust my horizontal level right now. Am I hungry right now? Not necessarily. What time is it? 2:30. We've been streaming for an hour. Uh, Panasonic's event isn't until 4 p.m. Right now it is, I don't know if you can see that, it's 2.30. So we're gonna hang out a little bit longer. Unfortunately we don't have, you know, a bunch of necessarily a bunch of time today either because we had a flight this evening uh, so we're and this is started at noon so we couldn't even get in here any earlier than we did really and Panasonic's not till four I didn't even see a Panasonic booth did you might have been the very front people online will probably have an easier time finding Panasonic info than we will you can 
couple keystrokes on Google and you can find out whatever you want. We've unfortunately got to use our feet. Oh yeah, that's cool. You can see it. I've been seeing a bunch more. A little glimpse behind the scenes. A silhouette of the of the rig. Yes, uh, someone already answered it for me, so I appreciate that. But it's the Zune Smooth Q shooting with an iPhone, iPhone 5S, streaming to YouTube live. And yes, it is live. So if you say something in the chat, I can if I see it, which is sometimes hard to see my my screen in the sun. Sometimes I'm not always looking at it, but. You want me to point the camera this way? Uh, I guess, all right. David's uh, snapping a photo of me, so I'm doing a little posing right now. Here, I'll flip it around. You can... Let's see, flip the camera. There we go. What's up? There we go. Posing for a photo. <laughs> you got what you need? And, uh, quarter turn this way? Quarter turn. There we go. A little bit more. A little bit more. Everyone on the live stream is going to know how staged that was. That's fine. Where are you going to post that, David? Oh, you're going to post it. Oh, I'm going to post it. He's going to post it. That's what he looks like when he's live streaming. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People are going to ask. Well, people, people ask what the setup is. iPhone 5S. Here it is. Plugged in. I got, I got battery power. I got this. Oh, here. I can actually show you that. This thing is so awesome. Okay. This RAV power battery brick. Okay. This is 15,000 milliamps 15,000 most of these are like 5,000 you see some 10 this is 15,000 this thing's awesome powers your phone I'm plugged into the gimbal hopefully it lasts all day and let's see yeah RAV power there you go that thing is what kept the NAB stream going all day long it's what's powering this stream all day long It's kind of weird being in uh, the back lot here at Paramount Studios because it feels like we're just walking down a, a street with a bunch of stands, you know, like a, some kind of bazaar or a swap meet, flea market. But it's all fake. You kind of forget though, you're on a, uh, on a set. Especially because that's not why you're here. I mean, people take tours of this studio, but we're not even here for the studio. Granted, it's a great location for something like this. But we're here for all the gear. And the gear could be anywhere. Which it was at NAB, which is why we checked it out there, too. Oh, so there's the... We're back by the Zine booth. Which is basically where we started. Yeah. Zakudo. Alright. What are we doing? Oh, Dave's just snapping photos. ZGC Cook. The professional's choice. Classic, a 7i, full frame plus. We've got anamorphics. Ooh. And anamorphic zoom. Picture not to scale, that's for sure. 
Look at this thing, it's massive. I need someone to stand by it. I'll grab David and you can see the scale of it. Beautiful lenses. There you go. So much expensive film equipment all in one place. It's no wonder they need to insure it all. Yeah, I don't know, how many of you guys actually use stuff like this? Is it just uh, dream wish list type stuff or is it something you'd actually rent? Yeah, there's the kudo. Double back, go pick up David. Yeah, all this stuff is really, really cool. You know, kind of just drool over it all, like, oh, it's so amazing. It's so expensive. And if you've got, you know, Hollywood sized budgets, then of course. But for me, Oh, just watching you change lenses. Um, for me, I almost like seeing how they do it with, you know, a hundred thousand dollars, and then how can I do that with a thousand dollars? That's what I think is a fun challenge. So cheap. Well, some things you can't do, but other things you can. For a fraction of the cost. That way you can know like where it's important to spend your money, like on actors, on sets, hair, makeup, wardrobe. It's an issue we ran into recently. Your script. Trying to discuss like why we shoot with the gear we shoot with. It's lighter, right? It's not that it's cheaper. It is than a dolly. It is less expensive. No, like the light stands we use. They're not C stands necessarily. Oh, for but, travel, yeah. But for travel purposes and the stuff we do. The image quality isn't going to be affected. Yeah. The lights yeah. themselves. That's it, does it look cooler if you have C-stands on set? Absolutely. Yeah. Do cine lenses look cooler? Absolutely. Uh, they look. Yeah, you look cool. You look. You look professional. But like when we did the uh, those cinema lens tests over at mp &E, it's like there are clear advantages to cinema lenses and cinema glass, but. But a lot of times in the final product, someone's not going to notice those advantages. Maybe you know, in terms of the easy use of handling on set, or the you know the breathing when you're focusing, um, the the image quality characteristics. A lot of times, if you're putting something on YouTube, or you know, how many people even judge? I mean, you're talking about faking until you make it, but with real talent, right? So when you're in college, you're trying to produce. Oh, in college for sure. <laughs> you're trying to produce You've got something like that nothing. looks fantastic. <laughs> so you make something that looks high quality cinematic like, oh my god how'd you do that how'd you pull it off you'd be surprised but yeah you can do a lot with a little I mean that's why the 5D Mark II is such a big deal yeah same thing now with like the GH5 or anything you know it's like a $2,000 camera and you can still make incredible images with it yeah. you don't need the latest and greatest but you do but so, need to sometimes know. you do though for like specific shots you need something that legitimately costs $8,000 to rent but you might not have that budget if you spent that eight grand on getting something that you didn't necessarily need somewhere else. You know what I mean? So I think it's good to have an understanding of all the gear and know like what you need and why you need it and knowing where you can cut corners so that you can always make the budget balance because no one has an infinite budget. You've always got to cut some corners somewhere. You should know how to use equipment too. Or you should know how to use as much as possible because you're probably put in a situation where you have to use it. Yeah. But when it boils down to like buying a 5D Mark III versus a Canon 60, what is it that you need necessarily? Or do you just need the Are you, what are you trying to do? 
buy a much cheaper camera, less expensive, get a similar quality image. Are you going to be shooting in low light? Are you going to be shooting in like, studio strokes? Yeah. You can pull off a extremely similar quality. Always depends on the shoot. Always depends on the project. Do you want to see me go find Panasonic's booth? Yeah, let's go find it. This is such a perfect location for something like this, though. I, mean, I think that's, that's something that comes across in, like, on my Instagram post. Like, I'll post a photo. Little do they know, it might be just an iPhone. Like, shot on iPhone. Shot on iPhone, Both yeah. People are like, oh, man, what camera did you use? Like, uh, my iPhone. Or my GoPro. Or yeah. As long as the final image looks the way you want it to look, you, does it really matter how what you use to get you there? I mean, it's helpful for other people to know. If you know how to frame a shot, if you know how to properly. Like, what do we have here? What do we have here? So we've got A7R right here, and feet away, got an Alexa Mini. Always different tools for different jobs. Red Rock Micro Booth. Oh, Bright Bright Tangerines this, over there. This original underwater housing. <laughs> oh, right on. Hydroflex. Do oh, that's what they use for Mission Impossible. Right on. Alexa 65 underwater. Tom Cruise or his stunt double. But I think Tom Cruise does a lot of his own stunts, doesn't he? I was talking about Tom Cruise up there. Or Mission Impossible. Rogue Nation. The underwater scene is actually really cool. Always doing his own stunts. Talk about Scientology, man. It's been good to him. <laughs> um, I want to know where they're getting these. All the, the straw hats. Teradek. Teradek is giving away the straw hats, apparently. Are they like uh, wireless transmitting? Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe so. Let's go by the airport. What is that? So, with a lens just mounted to it? Yeah, everyone's got these straw hats and David wants one. And Teradex giving them away. Don't act like you're not impressed with the straw hat straps. I, I'm okay with the hat uh, hats that we currently have. Is there, do we need to go that direction at all? Or is that that's back to the food court, right? Behind us? More drinks. Was it that it was that first stage area, which was like way back at the beginning, right where that line was? Do you want to walk back over there? Walk your turn up. Right. 
See, I'm not sure why that, maybe just because there's not enough room, but there's a, a first stage area that had a line to get into it when we first got here. So they sent us all the way over here, which seems to be the start of the Cinegear Expo. The other area was technically the start. Probably just not enough room. Too many companies. Growing too, growing too big. Did we walk? We walked that way. Yeah, we didn't. Because we were, we were screwing around with the 360 stuff when we were out here before. I kind of wish the 360 stream would have worked better. That frame rate could have kept up and the resolution could have kept up. Because yeah, I was streaming at like the lowest quality setting, so obviously it was going to look terrible. But I think I think that'd be fun because I think it'd be nice rather than just seeing it only from my perspective and what I'm pointing at to be able to look at whatever you want to look at. And get the whole plan. There's the, the whole conversation that they missed when we were up there. Uh, talk, was it Andrew that we were talking to over here? Yeah, person. from Radiant. Yeah, Radiant. Did you want to go see what these booths are over here? Yeah. Uh, they, they kind of like the back end. Ever in the live stream, kind of missed out when we were talking about the uh, the licensing deals that they were trying to get with all the sporting companies to do to put in their 360 cameras mm -hmm. for uh, tank. Water just fine. <laughs> Thank you. Have you guys seen everything yet? No, yeah. everything. Where, where do you get the hat? That's what I want. I got this hat at this company. Yes. Teradek. Where is that? And where is that Liz located here? I'll oh, you've got a map. Yes, we have the map. Uh, they are actually down Brooklyn. Yeah, this T section they'll be on. Right, is that? Yep. Yeah. What would you have to do for the hat? It's a free hat. Free hat? Yeah, it's free. You also get these hats. They're also giving out fidget spinners, too. Fidget spinners, ooh. I got lucky enough to grab them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they still have those, but they definitely have hats. Like okay. Boxes. So straight down. Yeah, pretty much. You'll, you'll see them. You'll see them. Yeah, they're on the T section. Gotcha. Pretty nice. I might go alone. Okay. I don't want to live stream through that. What, yeah. waiting for a hat? Yeah. Hey, you know what? Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the conversation we were having with, uh, they were saying the licensing deals were preventing them from having cameras put up, multiple cameras, because we're talking about uh, NFL Sunday Ticket, right? Mm -hmm. You can switch between all the different games, but it's with their licensing that you can't control their cameras, right? So you can't choose what camera you want to watch from what perspective, but with what they want to do, they want at least one camera that they can put in there, but depending on the licensing deals they make, they can't put multiple cameras, just one 360 camera. Yeah, I don't really watch sports, so. <laughs> Where are we going? What are we doing? Camera tools. This is from uh, actually made in China, oh, yeah? but uh, well reputation in Japan and Korea. Mm -hmm. So the Lokina mm -hmm. is called Samyang, such mm -hmm. as a Korean company. So you know the uh, like a Japanese uh, reviewer or DPs, mm -hmm. they like this lens. Oh, okay. so this is a EF mount. Oh, EF mount. How do you pronounce this? Lawa. Lawa? Yeah. L A O W A? Lawa? 360 cameras. Gimbals, oh, we got the, the Gear 360. Is it the LG Good Friends, I think is what that camera's called. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know uh, this? This one, right? Yeah. The Gear 360? I mean, the uh, the gimbal. This is called, a company called Moza. Oh, Mo the Moza gimbals? Yeah, Moza gimbal, and that's uh, Lampard. Lampard, okay. And this is like a universal, and this is APA, Sony. 
It's a Korean product. Cool. Thank you. I haven't seen anyone else rocking the Rokinon Zine hats. Have you noticed anyone else have these? Did we get special treatment? No, they were mean mugging us when we went to the canyon booth, though. Oh, they were? And then I held up this, and then we were cool. Oh. <laughs> yeah, do we look like we work? Like, do we look like we work for Zine? I think so. They're black. It's all black. <laughs> We should tell people that where we work for Zine. Okay. Ooh, what's going on in there? Something's going on in there. No. I'm gonna walk around. Just me and the stream, man. Chat will keep me company. Right, guys? You go check out that. Elytra? Professional Adventure Lighting. Oh, here's those Atlas lenses. Yeah, you gotta grab those plus moments when you really cost it all. Oh, they've got a live feed. That looks so good. That's so cool. So they've got her going through this camera hooked up live feed to this TV and it looks awesome. Even with like the, I mean they do have some lighting in here. Nice and cool in this little tent. It's a nice little setup in here. And it's a it's a refundable deposit by the way. Dan on the panel says and I say too is like if you Oh I guess it's technically this camera that's feeding that monitor. You know, and uh, you know, find a way to get the deposit in because it gets your place. I hope I didn't cut anyone in line. So you just get to sit here all day? Fun stuff! Yeah, focus is super smooth. They have her right about at the very nearest that it can focus. I can focus a little closer, but not much. And it looks really sharp on this monitor. It's great up there. Since you're filming, let me put on this this lens is so gorgeous with real motion picture filters. Yeah. Let me show you. This is ah, this is a black pearlescent. Okay. This is beautiful. Oh nice. See how beautiful yeah. it is. For that mood. Uh-huh. Yeah. You just kind of soften okay. it up a little bit, you know? That's wonderful. And then you can go drop this in and get some real mood out of it. Yeah, absolutely. And the lens is beautiful. The render's filter is beautiful. Yeah. These lenses are, are slick. I just want to know, how much are they? That's how they get you. What do they got up here? Soft panels? Panels two by three. Beautiful lenses. Yeah. 
So it was a uh, Tiffin filter. So it was a black, like not a black diffusion, but something like that, just to kind of give it that haze, that uh, that kind of glow. I, I didn't particularly care for the look of it. A little bit too much, too aggressive for my taste. It's kind of get that uh, like overly dreamy look. It was like a black mist. Did he say it was actually black mist? I thought he said it was something something else, but uh, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of of like draw making a look that draws attention to itself, and that I think does is too heavy. But something similar to it, yeah, I think is nice. Just maybe not as much, not as strong. So let's uh, let's keep walking around and see we can make our way back to kind of the entrance. That's where the red booth was. And we need to get a, yeah, Black Pearl, that's what it was. It's a uh, Pirates of the Caribbean filter. No, <laughs> I just happened to see the latest Pirates of the Caribbean. It, uh, it's, it's fine. It's a, an acceptable movie, I suppose, but I, I much preferred King Arthur, actually. I really enjoyed Guy Ritchie's King Arthur. It was a lot of fun. Very, definitely silly, definitely goofy in parts, but highly entertaining. And I don't know if I'd say it was like original, but it, it felt unique. It has something to it that's uh, just stylistically, you know, it's it, a fun energy that is uniquely Guy Ritchie in the way Guy Ritchie would make a King Arthur movie. And I appreciated that. Compared to Pirates, I would much rather see like King Arthur again. Even though it's got gotten terrible reviews from a lot of critics, I think a lot of regular audience members have enjoyed it. All right, let's flip this camera around. Get you guys back. Walking through everything. So David's off trying to get one of these wicker hats. Is that what you call them? A wicker hat? I'm looking like a zine employee as I walk around. Maybe that's good though, I'm a little incognito, under the radar. I think NAB is far, you know, the bigger conference to go to in terms of popularity. But I think this one's got a much more interesting, cooler vibe. And in many ways, it's exactly what I expected. Cinegear is a camera expo at Paramount Studios. Yeah, I should probably take this hat off, huh? But it's so nice, it's keeping me nice and cool, keeping the sun out of my eyes. I don't know. I also don't have a good spot to put it. David's got the backpack. Guess I'm just gonna have to keep wearing it. Lots of people, but because it's, you know, outside here at the back lot, there's a lot of room to maneuver. Some areas get a little cramped, but overall, it's not as congested as maybe NAB feels. Just because there's so many people there, and it's inside, it's a lot more just claustrophobic. It's a beautiful day. It's now 3 o'clock here. It is 76 degrees. Feels like 80, because there's not much of a wind coming through. It's lovely. Couldn't, uh, couldn't imagine it being better. So here's some of the sound stages here. I don't think we're technically allowed and we're supposed to go over there. So this is, again, that, that long walk that we had coming in. So here's some of those exhibits at stage two. And again, there's still a line to get in. I don't know what the line's all about. I don't know if there's some special event going on that. They need to filter people through it, but I don't feel like making you guys wait in line with me just to get in and see some boots. Seems like a, uh, a waste. Oh yeah, let's go. Wait. Never 
mics? <laughs> Waiting in line to see cool stuff. So DJI's in there. Red's in there. Panavision's in there. It's in there. So it's Red, Panavision, and DJI. No, I don't. Panasonic's not in there. It's Panavision, Light Iron, Red, and DJI, and something else. Production resource group. So yeah, this is this line keeps getting longer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak through. Don't worry, I'm not cutting. I promise. So you guys can see what's in there. So how do you get to DJI? It's quite a line for those companies. Yeah, I think I'll head back over to Canon right now. I do want to ask them if they've got the C200 there. I don't think they do, but... If they do happen to have the C200, I'd love to take a look at it. The Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro. I think that's what you guys want. Every time, so I shoot with the Ursa Mini 4.6K pretty much every shoot. Uh, this past shoot that I was, I don't know if you guys were following me over on Instagram, uh, sometimes I post a little stuff there in my story or, or little photos or whatnot. Um, what we were filming in Chicago was um, kind of like a more uh, typical, like boring presentation kind of thing. You know, something that needed to be captured. So we didn't use the Ursa Mini for that because it wasn't necessarily about the image quality. It was just about capturing the video content itself. Um, but I'd say, you know, 90% of the shoots I'm doing lately are with the Ursa Mini 4.6K. Not the Pro. And even... And, it's just gorgeous footage. It's like looking at that footage every time I bring it into post. Like, I will shoot with the GH4, shooting Vlog L, and externally recorded, you know, ProRes. And the GH4 with Vlog L, externally recorded with ProRes. It looks nice, you know, there's, there's no question about it. It looks nice, but the Ursa Mini looks so much better. It's, it's very um, side by side. They look. Uh oh, I got bad connection. Sorry, I'm gonna hopefully get some better signal here in a, in a little bit. It might just be because I'm between these two buildings. Let me get back to a good connection and hopefully get back to streaming loud and clear. Let's see. Oh, there he is. Oh, you didn't get me one? It's a lot harder than you yeah. think to get, yeah. All right, I got bad connection in here. Let's uh, step out this way. So David got his hat. No, it, was a, it was a full on mob over there. The wicker hat. Is so they're giving them out for free? Uh, every hour, on the hour, one person comes out with a stack of hats and everyone mobs the guy. <laughs> But I got one. So, you had to, uh, so how long did you have to wait? Well, I got there at 2.58. So oh, perfect timing. <laughs> perfect timing. <laughs> but I got my sweet Terra Deck hat. Okay, we're back up and running. We got good connection again. Nice wicker hat. Stream coming through loud and clear. Chat, everything good? I hope so. Anyway. So what I was saying was about the Ursa Mini compared to the GH4. The GH4 is, is great, uh, you know, for the price point and everything, but side by side, there's just no comparison. Hands down, the Ursa Mini 4.68 is better. Now, do I wish the Ursa Mini had the Pro features of the Ursa Mini Pro? Absolutely. Do I want built-in NDs? Definitely. Do I not want to have to use an IR cut filter on the lens every time? Yes. Do I want more controls on the body? Yes. Uh, can you get away with just the Ursa Mini, just the regular 4.6K version? Definitely. And the footage looks spectacular. For, for the price to performance ratio, it's, it's, it's in that same category as the GH4, where the GH4 is much cheaper, but still the features are so, so strong. And it's, you know, punching above its weight class, same thing with the Ursa Mini. Like, looking at that footage, is just gorgeous. And uh, if you're looking at getting the Ursa Mini or the Ursa Mini Pro, 
I think if you're if you want to invest that kind of money into a camera, I think you're going to be. Oh, let's uh, fix this sign here. Well, if I the wind is picking up a little bit. So we'll, we'll help them out. Is that still going to fall again? Who is this for? Global Cinematography Institute, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. No, the... Uh, oh, looking good with that hat, David. You want to take, uh, you want to take my, can you put this, this one in your, in your bag so I don't look like a Rokinon employee? I want it. What am I going to do with this? Well, which one? We'll keep both of them. Mine, you want mine on top? Okay. Is anyone in the stream one? Ooh, the ra give them away, do a raffle, make everyone wait in line for an hour. Do some kind of raffle. I would uh, put them in your bag, but I only have one hand free. Mine's the one on top. Got it. Anyway, to wrap up my final thought, looking to save money, go with the GH5. If you want to spend a little bit or some mini pro, I think it's a great investment. But I am excited for this new Panasonic camera. Because if you already have a GH4 or GH5, that might cut a little bit better. You know, everything being Panasonic. But that, that Ursa Mini just. Whew. I'll be shooting with the GH4 and be like, oh, this looks good, looks good. And the Ursa Mini, same thing, I'll be shooting with it, looks good, looks good. And then you get into post production and you put them side by side. And David, it's like, it's night and day. You look at the Ursa Mini, you're like, that looks beautiful, GH4. Uh, it leaves a little bit to be desired. But granted, the price points are so different that it makes sense why one looks better than the other. I mean, just. I mean, you probably already talked about the dynamic range, but just the dynamic range alone just makes it look leagues ahead. The dynamic range, also just the the, the texture of the the footage. texture and like the the noise yeah. of of the Ursa Mini is just so it, pleasing. It looks, yeah, it looks like what you want, like a digital camera to look more filmic, more yeah. cinematic. And the GH4 just looks like okay in comparison. Ah, no. Yeah. Fooled me once, sign. Should we help him out again? Absolutely. Not. Come on. Yeah, what are we doing? Photo. Now he could be... He could GH5 be color. It's a GH4. So if you watch my GH5 review, I talk about it a little bit. The GH5 internal color is definitely better than the GH4 internal color. By how much? It's hard to say. I think it's hard to kind of quantify that. It depends on the scene, depends on what you're filming. But it is improved. Um, and I would say I would say enough so to be significant. Uh, shooting with the GH5, I just found the noise to be uh, m more pleasing to look at. It wasn't like the weird chroma color noise of the GH4 in Vlog L. It was just kind of a nice, clean, even noise to the shadows on the GH5. It still has noise, you know, it's like you're shooting log, so all those shadows tend to be a little bit noisier. Just because they're so elevated, you know, you're not there, the blacks aren't the, that deep, rich black, which are going to do that in post-production anyway, I would hope, you know, kind of push that all down to the lower end of the exposure the level. Well, I know the style, a lot of people like to shoot flat, but like you still want a little bit of contrast, so that's why, you know, if you shoot overexposed. No, I'm saying what people do is you color correct to get your like blacks and your highlights, but then you boost your blacks in post to get better. Sorry, I didn't see that. Which lens am I using? With what? Which lens is best? Let's see, cancel this. Flip my camera. Which lens is best? I really, I really like the Sigma lenses, the 18 to 35 and the 50 to 100. That 50 to 100, I'm in love with on the Ursa. You don't like the Zine lenses? Uh, I like this. I like Zine lenses in theory. I've never used them myself, so I can't say. Yeah, I just say that to get free hats. What would you have to say for that Teradek hat? Nothing. You just had a mob. You just had to stand in line. You didn't have to chant GoPro, GoPro, GoPro. Nothing, nothing dumb. Even Atomos booth. I'm not sure if anyone saw the Atomos booth, how small it was. Yeah, we're sellouts for Zine.
corporate shills confirmed. All right. We should keep moving around, right? I stand here. Are you posting on Instagram right now? Is that what you're doing? Just stories. Just stories. Photos will be posted tomorrow. And for the underscore next underscore Flores underscore underscore. You really gotta change that. It's not a it's not a searchable username. Yeah, that's fine. How do you find me on Instagram? Strons V. How do you find David on Instagram? Strons V, and then look at his photos and see who's tagged, and find underscore underscore Flores underscore underscore. And you look at Strons' coolest photos. Yeah. And then look for look for my yeah. uh, my photo credit. You do take very nice photos. I need a. Uh, we should do. We should go find a good spot for do a 360 photo. Where? Ooh, with the water tower. Good call, David. I also want to get a shot of it back there. It'd be nice to get it when the sun is setting. But we won't be here. <laughs> kind of awkward to get over into this area because <laughs> there's the one staircase way over there and then the only other spot is like the edge of the, the pool here and there's the paramount water tower i don't know the history of that like why that was a thing to have everyone have water towers at their studio Have I shot video on the 1DX Mark II? No, I have not. I would love to at some point. I was looking at renting it for a job, uh, but I ended up going with something else at the time. It um, looks like a great camera. Just, It's just got that Canon price tag and not enough video specific features to really be all that attractive to me. I like the I like the stills benefit of having something like a GH5 or a 5D or a 1D or an A7 or you know any of the hybrid cameras, but I like when they have they take the Panasonic approach and they focus more on the video side of things and then oh we also happen to have photo features. But for most shoots like if I'm gonna rent something, I'm gonna go with something that's got for a video shoot specifically, I'm gonna go with something that's got the video features I need. So, which is why for a long time we were renting the Ursa Mini, and then ended up buying one, and then, uh, which is why it's, you know, GH4, GH5 make a lot of sense. Sometimes shoot on the A7S, the A7S Mark II. Um, shoot every once in a while on RED. Uh, shoot, shot some stuff on the FS7, but once the Ursa Mini became more and more available, we stopped using the FS7 uh, quite as much just because we found Ursa Mini is a little bit easier to work with. I think any camera that can shoot ProRes just natively in camera, right to a SD card or a CFast card, it's just so nice. You just bring the files in, they work great with Premiere, there's no fuss. You can color it, you can play it back. Even at 4.6K, you don't need that beastly of a machine. But a lot of the other uh, codecs that are maybe more highly compressed or more optimized or whatever, or proprietary, they just end up being a total pain in the ass to work with. That's why I like, for as much as the you know the, the Canon Cinema EOS cameras are nice and they have a good look to them, the times that I've worked with files from those cameras, specifically like the C500 and the C100, the Mark I version anyway, just a chore to work with. I don't know if a lot of that's been optimized because I haven't been shooting on the Canon stuff lately. But... Just stick with ProRes, you know? I think, you know, a lot of these companies have to pay, you know, royalties to Apple or whatever it is, but it's just such a solid Kodak, and, you know, it was built for professionals, and it's, it's withstood the test of time. If uh, someone wants to come out with a better Kodak that's more more edit-friendly, better, better compression, higher quality, then great, but it seems like a lot of these companies kind of operate in their little silos, and they come up with their own own codec that no one else supports so then like it ends up being a chore to work with rather than something that you're like happy about editing the footage so David's snapping some photos right now uh, I showed everyone earlier before but this is that insta 360 nano that I was doing the 360 live streaming with so 
this is cool. Live stream didn't work out so great. But what's nice about this is you can put it right on your phone and take photos, but you can also take photos with it like by itself just like this. So I can just, there's a button on the back here. Sorry for focus, I, I have no control over it. It's just the YouTube app. Focuses on what it wants to focus on. Let's see, come on. Focus. Yeah, all right, whatever. There's a button here on the back. You just click and it'll snap a 360 photo. And you can either do it this way. You can do it with your finger like this, or you can flip it around and do it with your thumb like this. So, these 360 photos are just kind of fun. But, no, they're not for everybody. But I like them. Kind of just fun to play around with, post on Instagram. We talked about that. Face, Facebook actually has, Facebook lets you view View, Facebook will let you view photos in 360. Instagram doesn't let you do that yet, but you can still make the tiny planets and, and the fun stuff like that. Once you post two tiny planets, God forbid you do it back to back, your account all of a sudden becomes a tiny planet account. Well, that is true. But you just then you just start posting other regular stuff. Should we, should we walk over there to get a little closer or maybe turn our back to it so it's behind us? So, if anyone wants a wallpaper of the Paramount back lot, feel free to go to my website. <laughs> a wallpaper of the Paramount back lot while Sinegir is, is happening. <laughs> Dutch ancestors. Vanderplug is a very Dutch last name. Yes, uh, I am 100% Dutch according to my family tree and heritage. I did, I did the 23ME genetic test that told me I'm not, it said I was like British and Irish and a few other things, but as far as my family tree goes back, uh, yeah, it's, it's all Dutch. I've actually been to Amsterdam, been to the Netherlands, beautiful place, of the plow, yes, Vanderplug means of the plow, and my mother's maiden name is Vander Arty, which means of the earth. If anyone wants to steal any sweet photos from Amsterdam. Visit my website. David's also been to Amsterdam. Uh, if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much, so... Let's take this photo, David. You want to pose? Alright, we're going to pose for a 360 photo. Yes, we can. <laughs> Is it going to be 360 with the live stream? Yeah. Yeah, I got to... Actually, what I want to do... Because I click it, and then there's like a little delay so I can move my thumb down. So your thumb's not gigantic. You can move your thumb down a little bit. So I got to make sure I do that. So click it. And we'll do one more. All right, cool. Uh, here, let's do one with the live stream here, so you guys can be in at this time. Where are you going, David? You going this side? All right. Cool. David announced in about an hour tight. Oh, is this? Uh, are we talking about Panasonic again? David, do you mind holding this for a second? Sure. The Insta360 Nano comes with this nice little cloth carrying case, so you can put it in there to kind of protect it. But I gotta make sure I power it down first. <laughs> if you're looking for this, you can find it on Amazon. I've done some other 360 videos. There should be links in the description on those videos. You can go, you can go find it. It's like 200 bucks. It's iPhone only, uh, but also standalone too, but meant for it to be used with an iPhone. There's a Android one as well. All right. So you went back over there to the Red Booth? No, well, yes. So I was headed over to the Red Booth and there was an incredibly long line and all that's in there is Red, Panavision, and DJI. So uh, still Yeah, still a line. Um, so what I was thinking was to go back to the Canon booth to see if they do have the C200. I'm going to ask if they have the C200. I don't think it'll be there, but we could at least go try it out and see. Yeah, the only thing they had behind glass were lenses. <laughs> yeah. Which is ironic. Is that ironic? It's funny. Sorry, I'm listening to this announcement. 
In the Paramount where? He was talking about the Panasonic announcement. It's going to be in the Paramount somewhere. Maybe we got to ask somebody or look for a, a flyer of some kind. But uh, let's go over to the Canon booth. That's at 4.30 in the Sherry Lansing. Uh, film kit says Paramount Theater. Now we have to figure out where the Paramount Theater is. Enjoy the show. Blackmagic Video Assist 4K. Speaking of firmware updates and, and uh, proper support for your product, that Video Assist 4K, when it first came out, not the greatest in terms of firmware features, but they've actually done a pretty good job supporting it. Nice updates. Still doesn't have anamorphic support, I don't believe. Um, but it does have LUTs now. You can lock the, the orientation to the screen. Um, what else did they add? Something else that I wanted. But it's a, it's a perfectly fine recorder, but I think for the price now, the, the better option is probably the Atomos Ninja Inferno, just because that'll do 4K60 now at the GH5. A little bit more future proofed. Do you want to get a monster energy drink, David? Too much sugar. Oh, they have sugar free. No, I'm good. I have water. They do have the booth babes, and I know how much your stream loves the booth babes. The booth babes, yeah. Make our way over to Canon. Was he waving at your hat? What's he, what he waving at? Oh. Probably recognize this. Thanks for everyone who's tuned into the stream today. It's awesome to have you guys all along. Just, oh yeah, yes please. I, I'm really curious to learn more about those Atlas Orion anamorphic lenses. What are they? Just the, uh, what are we looking at here? The Mantis 360 Plus. Set your camera free. So I'm doing a little. Is that Nino? Yeah, it is. Might have to stop and say hi. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Mantis 360 Plus. Set your camera free. It's a uh, release the power of reality. Mantis 360 Pro. 360 camera rig on on wheels. Is that what we're looking at here? So they've got, it's, it's a, an RC cart, and you put 360 cameras on top. So that's the Nokia 360 camera. I don't know what the other one back there is. Oh, a Radiant, a uh, Jaunt. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Nino over here. I'm gonna say hi. You're so you're so uh Dapper? Dapper's the word you're underexposed. There's the Cinema 5D guy. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing some interview over here with Master, I guess, is the company. I don't know. Cinefade, a novel form of cinematic expression. Shallow depth of field, deep depth of field. You vary depth of field in film. Gradually transition between a deep and a shallow depth of field in one shot at constant exposure. Cinefade. What? Is it a combination of ND and aperture?
sounds a little a little wild. To go from shallow depth of field to deep depth of field, that might be a neat effect. I'd love to see what that actually looks like. It looks like, is that what he's doing over here? Cinefade, yeah, he's playing around with it. So I'm guessing Cinema 5D is going to have a video about it in a little interview. What are they shooting with there? The GH4, GH5? You know it. Yeah, what's this booth? MKV, the future of camera stabilization. That's right. Got some, uh, the sun's starting to go down a little bit, so you got some nice shade. Your ISO in your app? I think it's, you don't want to change it's, it's, there's some kind of filter system too, so I think it's like an uh, electronic ND, it would be my guess, I don't know, electronic ND combined with aperture, so as you modify one, you modify the other. That's just my guess though, I have no idea. Okay, so how it works, the iris diameter varies the depth of field, a pair of polarizers, yeah, so like an ND, like a variable ND. I can tell you, I think I'm pretty sure like 38 million, it might have been 38 million, then there They have the screen under that hood, you can't see the bottom half of it. But yeah, it looks like it's a combination of iris with a variable ND. So I know you guys can't see it, but I can see it right now, I'm just trying to see what it looks like, they're doing a live feed. That's why everybody got so damn excited, that's why. So he's got Nino in focus there, and then he just changed the depth of field without changing exposure. That was pretty cool. All the competition drives down prices. So he's setting the exposure right now. He's dialing something in. how smooth it is. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to watch the background because right now it's all you know blurred out, like the shallow depth of field. Now he fo it looks like he changed focus in the background. It's really hard to see in there. I'm trying to make it out the best I can. Uh, this shallow depth of field. Deep depth of field. And the exposure. The, the exposure did not change. It's just like, it almost looked like a rack focus in the background, but keeping the subject in focus the whole time. Which is kind of a trippy effect. It would actually be really cool for like, um, like a special effect to have like everything in focus, and then if you wanted to bring attention to like your main character, because they like, I wouldn't do it now. They like, they're like dropping acid or something. But that's the thing, because it's that uh, film with the Hitchcock effect, right? Where it's like you're zooming in or you're, you're dolling in. But like the vertigo effect? Yeah. Just, uh, just with depth of field. I know you're not selling nearly as many productions as either are we. Essentially with the vertigo effect, you're getting that same kind of thing. Yeah. Where you have the shallow at first, and then when you go in, then you have the deep depth of field. It's a really cool effect. So I think they recorded a test clip, and I'm sure I'll make it into the uh, Cinema 5D video. Cinefade is the company. They said it's available to rent from Keslo Camera. You need to have the proper setup because it's all motorized with uh, lens gears. Definitely need effect. I'm, I'm sure we will start to see that being being used quite a bit. Just as another cool in-camera trick. It's amazing that the exposure doesn't vary like at all. Yeah. It's like perfectly in sync with what the, the variable ND is doing and what the aperture is doing. Paramount Theater seems to be between Marathon Street and Melrose. Yeah, we'll have to find out what time is it right now. 3.30. So, Cannon Booth is just up, just up the way, that direction. 
pop over there and then maybe try and make our way over to that Paramount Theater and see if we can see what's up. Hopefully they let us in with this live stream. <laughs> Film kids get send in a uh, map direction to this chat. I wish I could open that. I think it's going to end the stream though if I click out. Got someone coming through here with our uh, first mini. Hey. I don't need water. All you need is Diet Coke. I, I live off the, the stream of YouTube. Drink it in. Drink up that chat. Mmm. Just let them stream in here, man. So tasty. So it's, it's, it's a live stream. It's a oh, you want to see? oh these are, this is always fun to watch. Doing a little dance. <laughs> and I do apologize for the auto focusing nature of it. Again, with the YouTube live app, I, there's no no control over focus so or exposure. It's all auto, unfortunately. Oh, hey, he's showing off that little the variable ND. It's cool. I don't know if you guys can see that. So it looks like there's a motor right up there that spins the the polarizers yeah, to give you that cool. variable yeah. ND effect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just for, um, you guys, I mean, if you want to leave, it's not like a drive for sale, it's like a joke, just saying it out to you. It was a good move that I think you can find something at the price point. Right on. All right. They're busy doing their thing. Let's go over to Canon. Um, I just have my eyes. Didn't come through fast enough. Everyone likes the iPhone and gimbal. Canon. So this is a C300 Mark II. Excuse me. Do you have the C200 here? Yeah. So we got one on touch and try here, and then we got two of them on sticks over there. Excellent. We'll take you over. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. There's obviously you know people looking at it. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. There's one right there. And there's one right there. Excellent. Yeah, and then there's one on a touch and try right right at your you know uh, on twelve o'clock or whatever. Thank you, thank you. Right on. All right, so you do have some over here. Okay, so it's like this. You're looking at the premium thing. Okay. So what is it offering that? So, uh, Less than eight thousand. Uh, okay. They're so filming some kind of promo. Like the C two hundred. That size of it. That guy's got one. It's a, it's a decent size, but kind of smaller, probably in line with like uh, Red Epic or Scarlet, kind of that like a box, box shape of the lens on the front. Uh, yep, all of that functionality, even in triple frame rate, jet locking, time control takes out and inside. All of that for professional grade and the SA output. Well, I mean, it's, it's so hot in this booth. <laughs> See, these guys are looking at it. Always 
gotta wait in line, wait in line. Eventually, like it could be worked out, but, but like probably not right away. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, we haven't tried it. To be honest, we have no idea. Okay. Later, we can get it all down. Gotcha. Because yeah, you can't you can't buy the LCD by itself, right? They will eventually, actually, because they sell a version of this camera with that, nothing. With nothing. Yeah. Not even an idea. So and they are going to sell the accessories separately. So whether those be the other cameras or not. And the price point on this, like all without all the accessories, like 75. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 
ready yeah. for it. How does it feel, like, weight-wise? Like, does it feel pretty good? Yeah, it feels, I have a Mark 1 C100, it's feel a little heavier, but it's not bad. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, it's a little bit heavier. I know we can't do it. It wouldn't be able to go quite as long if you were to handle it. It looks like this handle's the same, yeah, you can adjust the pieces This is what's weird, though, is the... Two different angles. Two, yeah, the two angles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like that it's on the body now and not up the top. Yeah. You know, where that's yeah, like, I agree. You have uh, one right angle instead of that? Yeah, that's kind of kooky, but... But it does have SDI and HDMI, so that's kind of cool. No, we're just... Did you want to put it down here? Maybe yeah. remote yes, yeah. I thought I read that it's got uh, Wi-Fi control too. Okay. Are you testing it out? Uh, with an app? Yeah. <laughs> are you testing you the touch like screen out or are you doing something different? So you can have just oh, the handle. Yeah. Oh, okay. I saw a guy earlier um, take this piece off with the Allen wrench. And yeah. it just <laughs> it has like a, a three thread, I think. So you can, yeah. I, we brought it up to maybe like it was a quarter twenty, but I'm not sure. Engineer, I think it was it'd be, it'd be touch screen from R2. Yeah, yeah. touch screen from yeah. the 200 yeah. to like, put it on a 300. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. It, 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 it's a different cable for these. Right so for the, the Mark II, Mark II we, we, at, we said, we told the engineers people will want to do this, and they said, oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, it, it, it would need a firmware, it would definitely need a firmware. Um, of course. I don't, I don't think it's out of the question, but there's no confirmation. So, I know the, it's the XF ABC codec is maybe coming later. Is that going to be 8 bit or 10 bit? There's no confirmation, okay. but from rumblings, it sounds like 8 bit 420. Same flavor, just different formats. Like, well, well, MPEG 4 wrapped in XFABC, but um, okay. it, it, you imagine like this, where it's MP4 and ABC HD, same quality, just different wrappers for workflows. I imagine that's what it's going to be. Gotcha. Uh, I, I, I would be shocked if it got 4K 10 bit. Gotcha. Shocked. Okay. But the raw, the raw light, how, would that, how does that compare in terms of file size to like? Um, it's about twice the size. It's a, it's a, it's a gigabit per second versus okay. 410. Um, so can you, change you get about five to eight minutes per six four minutes. Can you change the base? And that works 4K60, right? Like yeah. you do raw light. It's 10 minutes 60, right and 12 minutes 24 and 30. Okay. You know, Which is insane. <laughs> Which is insane. <laughs> I just got done doing a, a talk on the camera. And like, no one was nearly as excited as they should be for 12 bit 24p. Okay, so okay, so like, what? That's awesome. Like, what? what? And I don't know the difference. What's the difference between C log and then C log 3? Um, so C log. Is old and never use it. C log three is new, designed for this sensor. So it's designed for the C three Mark two, this and the C hundred sensor. C log one was designed for this sensor in eight bit space. Gotcha. So if you're doing eight bit on the C two hundred, would you do C log or still stick with C log three? I don't know. Te te technically, C log one is an eight bit curve and C log three is a ten bit curve. I would have. So my fear is that possibly because it's, a ten, it's expecting 10 bits, you might get blocking. But I don't know. I, 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 I assume Canon's very conservative. If they would have thought there was a possibility, they wouldn't have included it. And that's why they didn't put Canlog 2 in. Because Canlog 2 is such an extreme curve in the mid-tones that it would be so gray and 8-bit, it would just block up. Yeah. So I imagine there was a QC process that was determined Log 3 is fine. I want to test the first, but like, I will I will shoot Log 3 very little. Cool. That's good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. All right. I wasn't really paying attention to the chat during all that, but hopefully that answered a few of your questions. Yeah, probably no 10-bit for XF ABC. And the C300 Mark II, maybe with firmware update with that touchscreen. Do we... Uh, I kind of want to do another 360 photo right here. Want to do it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Where's your monitor? What monitor? Grabbing another... I'm doing another 360 photo. Because we're right in the middle of this main street. And it's nice and shaded right now. So we'll see how it turns out. Ready? 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Stick Well, we're a little bit further away from the sign back there. That's what I was hoping for. All right, one more. Wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna hold this a little closer. Hold on. And one with the stream in it. That's gonna be like right in my teeth. All right, can you hold this a second? I gotta. You put the stream in my teeth. Put the stream in my teeth. Right, let's uh, for 60 nano. Oh, gotta turn it off. Put it away. If it's nice and safe and sound in the pocket, it works really well. <laughs> All right. Where should we go to next? We're going to go to the Paramount Theater. Do you have any idea where that's at? The Paramount Theater? Do we have to ask somebody? Maybe we'll go ask one. We'll ask one of the uh, security people. They'll know. They'll know where it's at. Okay, cool. Here, let's do this. They, they look like they're on a mission. Maybe we're trying to go to the same place we're trying to go. Oh, people have their delicious in and out. I'm trying to remember. What did we... Oh, we stopped at the waffle for breakfast. It was really good. Kind of like a retro hipster diner. Very, very good egg scramble this morning for breakfast. But other than that, I haven't eaten or drank anything all day. I probably should get some water. We'll see. Uh, you can guide me through chat. All right, where, where am I at? I'm right at the corner of stage four, right at the entrance to Cinegear, right there. So like, I'm up, so this is the direction I'm facing, stage four. There's the entrance. This street is, what street this is? Over there is Michael Bay. Yeah, Michael Bay is that way. Avenue. You sure you don't want a monster? The booth bags make it look very I figured you'd want to go over there. Very appealing. I also don't want to be that guy. What stage is that? Stage seven is down that way? Alright, film key. You said you were going to guide me. So you can get two uh, well, the security guy over there he has a map. He's got a map? Alright, let's go ask him. Chat was supposed to supposed to guide us. It's dropping the ball. Were you just trying to keep the chat on the booth, babes? Is that what you were doing? What? Keeping the chat pointed at the booth, babes? Chat loves the booth, babes. Everybody loves the booth, babes. <laughs> Even the babes love the booth, babes. So we're right at, on the edge of the, the this is the pool. Near the, near the so Paramount water, water tower. You want me to just grab one for him? I'll grab one. I wonder if we can even get into the Paramount Theater. Hopefully it's open admission. I wonder if it's like the Atomos where you needed a... Or we... A little token? Yeah, we can get this little uh, chip. These guys over here, you think? We'll, we'll ask them. They steered me in the right direction to get the hat. Thanks for the tip on the hat. Oh, got yeah. the hat. Now we're looking for the Paramount Theater. I'm impressed you guys actually got it because I was just talking to a guy that got the last one. So <laughs> when you said to go over there, apparently they give them out on the hour every hour. So I got there with two minutes to spare. Wow. Like okay, so the Paramount Theater is actually, you just follow the stream of people coming this way. So okay. it's the same oh, way nice. that you go for registration. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Because registration is behind the Paramount Theater. Gotcha. You're good. Sounds good. Thanks, man. So if you were like some big shot in Hollywood and you wanted to come to this, would you have a name badge with your name? 
Because we didn't have to show ID or anything. You I could just make up a name. I'd have my name on it three times. It was just like, yeah. <laughs> How the fuck did that even happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, because I think it asked, it asked like company or something. So I just put my name again because well, my YouTube, like whatever. Uh, so yeah, my name badge says Strons, Strons Vanderplug, Strons Vanderplug. I took a picture of it from my Instagram story, but as you can see. If this freaking thing would focus, you get the idea. I'm, I'm really digging this gimbal. Hopefully, uh, it's nice and smooth for all you guys too. Yeah, you know, if if, uh, if there's any question about what my name is, it's no questions anymore. So, oops, sorry. <laughs> We'll try and bring the stream into uh, this theater, but might have to be a little sneaky about it. We'll see. I'm not sure if we're even going to get in. Hopefully, hopefully they should want everyone in there, right? The more the merrier. The more people that get to see it. What time is it right now? 3.54. Perfect timing. I mean, if anyone, or if any company would want a, sh a streamer to be in their presentation, I think Panasonic would want me to be in there. Out of all the people. Humble brag over here. I'm just saying. When have I ever, like, said anything, like, bad about the GH4? And, and I'm, not even, I'm not even paid to say good things about Earlier, it. Earlier, when you were talking about how shitty it was compared oh, to Oh, compared to the Ursa Mini, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's garbage compared to the Ursa Mini. But it's a pretty good camera. <laughs> when you're comparing apples and oranges. So they said registration was behind the Paramount Theater. All right, we're gonna find it. We're gonna track this down. Right? I mean, I think it would be, uh, I'd be doing Panasonic a favor if I'm streaming their comp, their announcements. Uh, but we also might be running a little late because I think it's supposed to start at 4.15, but depending on when they're letting people in, it's getting pretty close to four o'clock. Through the gate and then to the left. Thank you. Everyone looks at me like I'm a like a crazy person or a tourist talking to myself with a super touristy looking iPhone and gimbal combo. There, hey. What are the chances that that is a Paramount Theater? They killed the camera size. I have no idea what that guy said. He said something they killed that camera size? Did you understand what he said? talking shit. He said the camera's too small. You don't let him talk shit to you like that, Strauss? Yeah. I don't know what he said. I would have chatted with him for, for a little bit, but he just said something and walked away. Alright, be sneaky. Nah. Already did it. Old. <laughs> I think that's what they were talking about. <laughs> All right. Where do we go?
Hello. What's what's happening in here right now? I'm not sure, but the next one's going to be Sonic. Okay, okay. That's what I'm saying. We're in the right spot. Excellent. Thank you. Series nine, series nine round, four and a half round, four by five, six by six. They really all, it's really a function of the lens you got behind it and being as, for me, it's about being as compact as possible. Like I like to be compact as much as possible. Like I use Bright Tangerine's Misfit Clip on a lot. It's small and light because I want it to be compact or I'll use four and a half rounds. It really doesn't change the way the filter, the filter reacts. <coughs> oh, what, uh, 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 narrow shutter angle? Oh, um, I, I don't do, I've done down 11 degrees. I've actually got to be much more heavy handed on digital than film. You know, what I would do in film, I'll almost double it for digital, for it to really get that, that effect. It's just a little different. It's just the way it scans. It just doesn't quite react the same way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for coming. It's a nice little setup in here. Mm -hmm. So that was the tail end of the previous presentation. <laughs> I guess we could have walked around for another 15 minutes. It was not hard to get in. <laughs> no line. So what I could do is I could stop the live stream now and pick back up right before they right before they start. Title it appropriately. You know, let people know what the stream is all about. Because right now we're not really... We're still at technically at Cinegear, but not the expo part. What do you guys think? Should I stop, restart it in a little bit, once we get up and running with the Panasonic presentation? Because otherwise we're just going to sit here for 15 minutes. And if anything, YouTube's probably going to flag this because they're playing music right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, everyone uh, check back in like Take a break, talk with chat. Grab a drink. Should. I need some water. I'm going to pass out here. I'll, uh, I'll, I'm going to stop this stream, start a new one, and then, uh, but I'll start a little early. Yeah, I won't start right at the beginning. I'll start a little early. So we can kind of have a little warm up. All right. See you guys.